My name is Tori and you are watching Courtry TV. Today we're talking all about work. My guest today is Christina Miao. Welcome to the show, Christina. Hi, Tori. So we're going to start off with some background. First, can you share with us what you do for work? Tell us a bit about your current role. I am currently a data entry operator in brackets advanced at um, with RBC. So I'm with the uh, Toronto DICE team, and that involves like reviewing and processing daily suspect stock lists. So it, the way I put it is it involves money. So I play, I like to say I play with money. Uh, I have a couple questions for you about your experience working with the employment services team. How do you approach a conversation about accommodation and disclosure? As you say, it's a very kind of a tricky subject to go around. To be honest with you, where I am right now, we haven't really needed to have this kind of conversation because everybody is super, what's the word? Under, understanding nobody is judging one another. So in this role right now, I haven't had the need to have this type of conversation. However, in the past, I recall needing to touch on this subject and even then I didn't feel comfortable bringing it up. If it's brought up, it was mostly if the manager or whoever is in charge isn't very happy with my work and needed we needed to chat about why my work was not going as well as expected. And that's a difficult subject to talk about. So the, the different managers that I've had previously, because I've gone through several, it ranges. Some can be understanding and some it could be the defining factor of whether I'm still working in that role or not. Especially because my type of disability, I am not just the visible disability, I also have the invisible disability, like a little bit of the mental understanding. And for me, depending on the work, sometimes I need more time to assimilate, like to understand my role, get into what I'm doing. And sometimes the managers don't have that kind of time or don't want to put that type of effort into helping me assimilate into the role. But again, that's the past. Mm -hmm. um, hiring managers, people that are, are looking to build a diverse workforce. So the benefits okay. of building a diverse workforce are well known, but still the unemployment rate for Canadians with disabilities is high. What advice mm -hmm. would you give an HR, HR specialist who's trying to expand employee diversity in their workplace? That's a hard question, but I think it, for them mostly to keep an open mind to any type of person they come across, right? Not to pigeonhole people in certain areas. They have, yeah, it goes back to keeping an open mind and asking questions and letting the, the person looking for work say what they want, what they're looking for. Although sometimes I find like, even for myself, I had difficulty explaining what I was looking for too. So it's a really weird area to be in, to be honest with you. Do you have any tips on how they might access the untapped talent market of people with disabilities? Oh, well, maybe if you have have um how do I explain it? like people in a in a group chat that that helps it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be in person it 
could even be like online group chat too because sometimes I find it's when you are not placing any pressure on the participants that something will come up and then they will send a message in the group and say hey I thought of this and then there'll be a discussion it can just be completely spontaneous too right so if you don't put pressure and put out a particular statement or question it might come up by itself but at the same time it might not nothing might come out of it either so it goes two ways you can only hope for the best